Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic as ever to have you here because yesterday we finished building this forge. And so right now we're in the process of gently bringing up the temperature so that we can cure that refractory and get it ready to forge because today's project is going to be forging a dining room table. Before we jump into that, let's thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 e-learning video courses that allow you to learn anything from marketing to business to photography to videography to illustration. You can learn it all on Skillshare. It's a fantastic way to broaden your knowledge base, make yourself more marketable as a creator or even in your work. The best thing is, since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first thousand of you that click my link in the description are going to be getting two months of Skillshare Premium for free. It's a fantastic deal that gives you unlimited access. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring the video. We need to make ourselves a dining room table. Let's come out and look at what the plan is starting to look like. It didn't look like much from the end, but we're gonna be taking some chunky pieces of steel. We're gonna be taking a piece of one by three inch flat steel. That is 25 by 75 millimeter flat steel. And it is gonna be coming across the top of, uh, of the table and that's gonna be where it meets the, uh, meets the table top itself. So they're gonna be tapering down into almost a hairpin style leg while leaving the ends thick enough to hopefully not damage the floor provided we have some pads underneath the ends. This is gonna be one cool piece. We're gonna have some strengthening cross members on the sides. I am thrilled to be doing this because right now I am using a fold up table from Ace. This is my dining room table. It's, uh, it's been a pretty hectic move here to Montana, so hopefully this will domesticate me a little better. Will is already getting ready with the steel in the bandsaw. This stuff is heavy. I've made some projects out of this same size of steel before. Let me tell you, it is one workout when you do it. What do we need, 49 and a half? 49 on the nose, yeah. there we go. So I've made things from this section of steel before, and uh, it becomes a workout. So thankfully, we've got that big forge Built, ready to heat some steel. It's gonna be a good day of forging. just happened. In order for us to be able to make the bend an appropriate place and also add a very nice aesthetic detail to the piece, we wanted to fuller in a mark. That reduces the strength of steel of that place, means that it's gonna bend super easy, but it meant that we had to make a tool. Now, this is one of my favorite things about blacksmithing, and that is when you need a tool, you make a tool. We cut off a piece of inch and a quarter stock. We warmed it up in the forge to preheat it, because this is 4340, so it's a higher carbon steel. You want to preheat it before you weld it. We forged out this handle, welded it together, did a little post heat, and uh, lickety split, we had ourselves the tool. Forged down this little pull here. The next step is we are going to start drawing down the legs. We want to get a nice taper on it. So instead of coming into the power hammer from this side, we're going to be coming into the power hammer from this side. We're going to be bottoming this thing out and uh, making this Anyang 165 do some work. Let's taper this thing. One heavy heat. Okay, you see what I did first? Is I started at the end of the bar to break down the end of the bar. Forging, as I learned from Brian Brazil, way back when, is all about surface area contact. So if we want to move and forge lots of steel, we need to be reducing our surface area contact to increase our pounds per square inch. Yep. So we're gonna start at the end, bring it on down. Break it down about a half inch on either side, right? But 
it's tricky because what we have is we have an extremely front heavy piece of steel. So you've got to keep lifting that bar up, doing little bits at a time, heavy stock removal, call for feeding in, establishing the taper and getting an idea of your dimension, calls for feeding out. Woo! Switch it on out. Thank you, sir. We have our second leg forged out and it's pretty close to all we're gonna have to do is cut off the end about two inches up and that's just fine for us. Second time around, so much easier to forge out these tapers. It did not take much at all, but it gets heavy. The amount of weight that you are holding and the heat too, even through those chainmail gloves. And it's like jumping on you and you gotta like hold it and, and it's trying to fight you, but uh, it's a fun adventure. Here is where we're at. Now, what we now need to think about is how we're gonna keep these legs together um, and at the right length and give a little extra bit of support and I want to do that by having a cross member that's going along the underneath of those legs. So, if you can visualize this, at these points here, these legs are going to get bent up. So we're looking at it upside down. I want to have this piece of flat stock riveted onto this in the middle. That'll mean that when we bolt this to the table, the tabletop can be unbolted, rebolted without the legs moving and getting switched around so it'll keep things level and nice and even. Now this piece here is about four foot long or so, which should work dandily for our six foot tabletop. But we got one problem, and that is we want to put some holes in this. But today is a blacksmithing day. Today isn't about going to the drill and just drilling any old hole. Today is about forging some stuff. So what we need to do is we need to punch the hole. Now punching is about displacing the material as opposed to removing it like a drill does. You remove a little bit when you punch, but it's mostly about displacing. And it's a beautiful thing that really only exists in forging. Moving that material either side instead of removing it with a drill or shearing it all away with a cold shearing punch. We don't have a punch, uh, but that's okay. Because today's a blacksmithing day, which means today's a day about making the tools that you gotta make to get the job done. And would you believe it, I already have the stock prepared, similar to what we did on that fuller we made like this. Instead, we're gonna draw this out into a punch, cut it off, weld it onto this.
So this is a quick and dirty little power hammer punch. The end's thinner than I think I'm gonna leave. I think I need to grind that back some. We welded it on, we did a post heat as well. And you'll notice this is a very stout taper. Very obtuse taper on the punch. You look at a punch like this, this has a much less obtuse taper. This is a much shallower taper. The reason for this is under the power hammer, inevitably, we're putting a lot of force in there and probably gonna strike more than once. This can get stuck. And so I wanna use the self-releasing properties of that aggressive taper to uh, help pull that out of the hole nice and easily without that getting stuck quite so easily. So this is gonna help. And uh, I'm looking forward to us doing some of our first power hammer hole punching here in Montana with the Annie Yang from James Johnson at Annie Yang USA. Be sure to tell him I sent you. So I'm pleased that we have this. Will also forged out a little small drift. Yep. This has one short taper at one end, a long taper at another. You drive this through and that short taper gives it the clearance to drop through the bottom of that stock. And uh, that's long enough to get through that inch stock too, which is very good. And this is our first day running the forge. And I have to say, overall, I am very happy with it. At first it was steaming a lot because that refractory had to dry out properly. And, uh, and so it wasn't quite getting up to temperature. Now we're able to get this thing, I think about as hot as we want. Time is gonna tell how we like it, how it consumes fuel, but we're really enjoying it so far. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it off for the day. I am super excited to get to some riveting, some punching, some of that fun stuff and finishing off this table in the next part of forging this dining room table. And as we round out the video, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare, online dining community with over 25,000 online video courses that you can access with their premium membership. You can access it all. Now, premium membership usually just starts at 10 bucks a month where you can learn everything from videography to business to marketing to watercolor drawing. You can learn it all there. Usually 10 bucks a month, but when you click my link in the description, first thousand of you that do that are gonna be getting two months of that premium membership for free. The course that I'm gonna recommend today is by Justin Bridges. It is DSLR Photography 2. It's about understanding lenses, focal length shooting, all that fun stuff which is essential to building your business and your brand online. Whether it is that you make knives, whether it is you make kitchen tables, whether it is you make uh, blacksmith's tongs, it is essential that you know how to photograph it well to showcase what you do. So be sure to go to my link in the description, get that two month free trial, act fast. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and keeping us all educated. Thank you guys for watching, it's been a pleasure. Can't wait to see you on the next one, bye bye.